Well, everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Story Box podcast. We're going to have a conversation today that needs to be had, that needs to be shared. And I hope that it helps a lot of you uh, listening today. You're Not Broken is a new book that is going to be released very, very soon by research psychologist and trauma specialist, Dr. Sarah Woodhouse. It's being released on the 30th of March, so just around the corner. Uh, In one way or another, we all carry a sense of trauma. We uh, can't really get away from it. It can manifest as anxiety, shame, low self-esteem, over, under eating, addiction, depression, confusion, uh, self-people pleasing, under under earning, low mood, negative thinking, social anxiety, anger, brain fog, and so many many other forms of, of trauma, all of which uh, I have actually dealt with on more than one occasion in my life. In fact, studies have shown uh, that consistently that approximately 70 to 80% of women especially will experience a traumatic event at least once in their life. Let that sink in for a moment. Uh, more rates for men experiencing a trauma in their lifetime is even higher, sadly, up to 90%. And uh, your new book, Dr. Woodhouse, speaks so much about how we can um, heal from trauma and what uh, trauma does to our body. So I just want to welcome you so much, Dr. Sarah Woodhouse, to the Storybox podcast today. Thank you so much. I was so, so happy to be here. Really am. I'm so happy to have you here because like I was saying to you uh, just before we started this, uh, I believe that Trauma is a conversation that needs to be had, uh, especially in today's day and age. And I think there's not uh, many people that actually talk too much about it or do a lot of research about it. And I think that needs to change. So I I just want to acknowledge you firstly for doing this work in particular, doing this this deep dive study. uh, And I can't wait to to unbox and, and dive further into it. Yeah, no, you're so right. It is is such an important conversation. I think over the last probably 10 years, it's, I think it's a word we've got a little bit more comfortable with, but I'd say we're, we're quite far from being very comfortable with it. Mm. And my hope, like really, truly my, my dearest hope is that over the next five years or whatever it might be that we're as comfortable talking about trauma as we are say talking about anxiety or depression which we've seen massive shifts haven't we in terms of how comfortable we are all are um, about talking about those things they're part of life we understand them they they feel very human there they're, they're, there's I, I understand there's still more to be done in terms of how how um, comfortable we all speak about those things but but there's been shifts and I and I hope that trauma follows that same trend because because it's 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 a reaction it's a human reaction it's something that we've all experienced to a greater or lesser extent it's something our families our kids our, our parents will experience it's something that we'll experience um and and yet we push it away we're, we're afraid that we're still in that space where we're like oh that just sounds a bit too close to the bone like that just sounds a bit too intense no one wants trauma right that's the thing, it, it, especially with we, we associate. So when we hear the word trauma, I think we think PTSD. So it's like the two are locked together when actually that is not true. It's it's very far from the truth. So PTSD is the top end of the spectrum. And then there's much, much the same as anxiety, say, where you've got generalized anxiety disorder up here. And then you we, we've all experienced anxiety, right? We all understand what it is. It's the same thing. You know, so the tra- trauma symptoms are broad and in one way or another, we've all experienced them. So we all need to gently, you know, as, as gently as we can kind of um, move towards this topic rather than keep backing away from it. And, and especially like all of us have experienced some form of stress. And I think quite often the stress leads to so many other underly- more problems really. Um, and you're right. I think that we are heading there and it's because of people like yourself that actually take the time to do some more research into these, this particular topic and really uncover things that need to be further researched and dive into. Um, and I guess the first question that I want to ask going, moving away from my normal traditional form of, of formatting is why do we have trauma in the first place and where does trauma actually come from is it just 
a experience that we have or is it something more to it than that? Yeah, it's a great question. And it's a really important one because I think as soon as as soon as it's laid bare, people go, oh, okay, I can I can deal with that. That doesn't sound quite as kind of scary or confusing or complicated as I thought it was. So essentially trauma is a reaction. Okay, so so it can be a reaction to a really big severe event. As you just said, 70 to 90% of us are going to experience those one of at least one of those big severe experiences um, in our life. So it can be a reaction to that, but it can also be a reaction to a much more commonplace everyday experience. Mm. And that's the truth. And I think that's the piece of the puzzle where people go, oh, okay. So how's that then? How can we have a reaction, a traumatic reaction to that and to that? Well, it's all to do with, with three things really. So at the base of a traumatic reaction is uh, overwhelm, a sense of threat and feeling really out of control. So if we deal with any experience in our life, and this is particularly true of kids, right? If you imagine how easy it is to feel overwhelmed when you're a child, how easy it is to feel threatened when you're a child, how easy it is to feel out of control. Okay. So, so, so they're, 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 they're prone to them. It's, it's easy for them to, to trip um, and, and it, into this sort of base of that traumatic reaction, have those reactions to an every, to a relatively everyday experience. So yes, they can be the big severe experiences, they can be the common everyday experiences, um, trips and falls, near misses, experiences within relationships, you know, experiences within parental relationships. Obviously, when we're thinking about kids, that's particularly relevant. So thinking about things like feeling unseen and unheard, feeling unloved, um, feeling emotionally neglected, all, all of those, rel- I would say, relatively commonplace um, childhood experiences. I'm a mum, I'm imperfect. You know, I'm certain that there's experiences that my children have felt. They are they are normal human um, aspects of parenting as we're all juggling busy lives. The key then is, okay, well, if it's so much part of life, what do I do if 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 the reaction occurs? So, what I'm saying is, we don't need to be afraid. If you learn about it, you you learn actually that it's very very possible to heal mm. um, because if we don't we can become stuck in that reaction. And that's another main message is if you're experiencing a lot of difficulties today, you know, that the gave a great summary of them at the beginning of our conversation. If you're experiencing sort of repetitive or high levels of anxiety, shame, people pleasing, um, and, and, or just having a difficult time, you know, or struggling with your coping mechanisms of ways of coping and it's happening repetitively and often, I would say just consider, just consider the idea that what you're experiencing today is a reaction to something that happened in the past. And that's all I'm saying. It's an idea. I'm not saying it definitely is. It isn't for everyone. But we know that that react that initial reaction that can that happens in the past, we know that people can kind of get stuck in it. They kind of get stuck in a loop of reactions of these like emotional, cognitive, behavioral reactions. And that's why it's all about repetition because they get stuck in these loops, right? And that's why 10 years later, 20 years later, 30 years later, we can actually trace it back Mm -hmm. to a time when you felt overwhelmed, threatened and out of control. Why do people feel so afraid of trauma or even just uncovering certain aspects of their life that were traumatic? Why are they afraid? Oh, it's such an interesting question because it's a really layered answer, I would say, to that. Part, part of the traumatic reaction is, is avoidance. Mm. So that's a big red flag for me. You know, when, when people can't be with their feelings, when they can't sit with them, when they can't be still, you know, with their bodies, with themselves, with their feelings, that, that's a red flag. That is a, that, that's a common symptom of trauma. Mm. So that's, that's relevant, right? If you're really pushing it away and pushing it away and you're just putting up that wall, that's that that avoidant response is a sign that something traumatic went on. So that's the first thing I would say. And then on a more like gentle human level, I would say, I don't know, I would say that, you know, it we're all we're all trying to cope, aren't we? We're all trying to, um, you know, I suppose it comes down to what I first said is no one, you know, no one wants trauma. That's the truth of it. And I think a lot of people perceive it as a weakness 
And I think that's why I'm trying to be part of that conversation of people saying, this isn't a weakness. This is a normal, natural human reaction. It's a physio- physiological reaction um, to do with our amygdala and our HPA axis. It's, it's natural. It's, it's an impulse. It comes out of us. Um, there is no shame to be had. We can talk about this without shame in the same way that we now can about anxiety. But I think, I think that's a big part of it, that people view it as a, a weakness. I think that's the, probably the right word. Mm. And I also talk about it like if you have experienced some form of trauma in the past, that that avoidance to it, I call it like your body's reaction to defend yourself. And it's a natural reaction to a, a damaging thing. And I also talk about what happened to me when I was six and I experienced a trauma. I was uh, kind of living in like this, this days for the better half of 20, almost um, 19 years or thereabouts. And I kept getting like these flashbacks like there were like these moments in my life where I'd just be like, okay, did that happen? And I kind of questioned it, but I was too afraid to ask someone that might have known if I did experience that trauma back then. So I kept it to myself and I'm like, no, 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 that's not, that didn't happen to me, no way. So I kept walking around my life with this days. Meanwhile, all these other traumas are happening all around me and it's just sparking all these other uh reactions in my brain and it's creating more fog creating more days in my mind and i didn't i didn't know how to react to it really i didn't know how to deal with it or heal from it because how can you if you don't even know that it's really there until it was made known or made clear to me by someone that yes you did go through this and then the veil was kind of like lifted and I'm like, oh, great. Now, now I've got to do all this, all this time that has passed since going through it. Now I've got to do this, this hard work. And I think it's also the fear of doing the work to heal from it. That's also mm, like I agree. another hard thing for people to go through because they almost like they've got to relive that traumatic experience in order to get past it and and heal from it. So yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. I really, I, yeah, I really, I really hear you and you have, you have articulated it so incredibly well, you know, that I, 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 that, that's trauma, you know, what, how, what you've just articulated, that sense of disconnection, that days that I'm just not quite here, you know, it's, in, in part, for a lot of people, that's dissociation. For me, that was a big part of my life was, again, why, why aren't I here? Why do I keep spacing out? Just feeling like I was living in a bit of a dream. Mm. And then a similar experience of actually not someone from my life, but a therapist saying, um, everything you're experiencing to me really looks and sounds a lot like trauma. And I wasn't ready at all. I just like, it was just wall straight up. No way I do not have trauma. I just stuck my fingers in my ears, you know, I just wasn't ready. Um, and, and, and of course it it didn't go away and I, and I eventually had to face it when I was ready, sort of, I'd say it was about three or four years after that. But the thing I would say is, you know, the truth is you don't have to go back and relive. Mm. That is important. And I would, and I would want all, all your listeners to, to understand that, that there are lots of different ways to heal trauma and, it, it's interesting the looking back piece that deep deep trauma work that reprocessing um a lot of people do do especially if your symptoms are up at that higher end but if we're looking down this end you know say someone that isn't having that kind of um intense dissociation that i did um there, there's there's a lot of other stuff that we can do it's really about looking at today and healing today you know, working on our beliefs, working on our coping mechanisms. Um, and, and if we start there, we, we quite quickly learn if we do have to have those intense conversations. But I think that that is an important message for me in the book is 
we we heal our trauma by looking at today. We heal today. You know, we heal the reaction today. And if we do so with honesty and a real like sense of authenticity and insight and connection to ourselves and are, and are open with those around us, if we do need to go deeper, we'll, we'll know. We'll know if we do, but not everyone does. Mm. Was it because of your own past experiences with trauma that you decided to go down this road and become a doctor, a psychologist in your own uh, right and deal specifically with trauma? Oh, a hundred percent. But I was in so much denial. I didn't know that's why I was doing it. Mm. Honestly, it was, it's just mad. I, I, I do write about this in the book. I, I remember, I remember, so I worked with um, a therapist for about five years. It wasn't weekly sessions, but essentially she was in my life for about five years. We're still in touch now and incredible, very, very patient woman. And I did a lot of my own trauma, my trauma work with her on my relational trauma. Um, and I remember saying to her, I, I write about this in the book and I'm not making up. I remember saying, um, do, do you think I've got PTSD? Mm. I said that one session. I said, do you, do you think I've got PTSD? And, and she said, let me just say that I don't think it's a coincidence that you have dedicated your life to learning and understanding PTSD. We all reach out for the things that can heal us, you know, and, and there was just this moment of like, oh, I get it. Okay. So I, I'm searching for answers because they'll help me heal as we all do. Right. And we all drawn to the things that can help us heal, help our beautiful bodies, our you know, our minds, our spirits heal and grow. Um, so I would say that the same, the same is true of most people. We, we reach for the things that we need, even if we're not consciously aware of what we did, why we're doing it, which I wasn't at the time. I wasn't aware, even though it was so blindingly obvious. I mean, a, a therapist had just suggested to me I had trauma and four months later, I was walking up to the university of Sussex saying, I'd really like to study trauma, but it's only looking back now, you know, 15 years later, that I'd be like, oh, that's curious. <laughs> wow. So yeah, right. how long did it actually take you to heal from your trauma or are you still healing from it? Oh, I'm still healing. Mm. We all are. And there's, there's no, no point pretending otherwise, you know, but I, I would say that of every single human, there is never a moment that we go, right, I'm done. I am totally fixed. You know, you dust off your hands and, I'm perfect. I'm baked. I'm cooked. Um, no, there's, there's always more work to do. And I think the thing that I've learned is that the weller I get and the stronger I feel the, the, the weller I want to be and the stronger I want to be, you know, it's a, and I'm, and I'm more willing to go deeper or, it, you know, what's that, that phrase you hear people say a lot, you know, people are onions. It's just so true, isn't it? You peel off a layer and then there's something underneath it. So there's always something, you know, in life, and if and, and I would especially say if you're committed to, to to growth and personal development in the way that I suspect you are, and I certainly am, that necessarily entails change, right? So you're constantly growing, constantly changing. So of course, new stuff comes up. So for me, for example, I am not a natural uh, kind of businesswoman. I, I'm, I just it, that is not the sphere for me. I I've worked in politics, I've worked in NGOs, and I've worked in psychology, of course. But that business thing for me is like way over there, never thought I'd be part of it. But of course, when you publish a book or you start up, you're trying to do these kind of online resources for people. Suddenly I'm having to learn about these things and it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. so, so there's a lot of growth. That I'm having a lot of reactions to it. I can be triggered around it, certainly. So as, as we reach for something new, of course, that can bring up old stuff for us. So I'm just constantly, he constantly healing, constantly growing, constantly learning about myself. Mm. And, and I was about to say what a joy that is, but the honest truth is some days that that's, it's intense and, and you can feel like, oh, hang on. Have I, I, I've, I've, I mean, I've been working on myself now for about 20 years. Can I, can it, can there really be more? Oh my goodness. Mm. Um, but ultimately I, I reap the rewards you do. You do. Absolutely. You know, you get such a full life and such a full connection to other people. Mm. If you're happy to, to go there and have the hard conversations and have the hard conversations about yourself, mm. you know, to sort of be really honest, um, and take personal responsibility.
I appreciate you sharing that because, you know, like I was saying before, I'm only 24 and been through a lot. I understand it. But if I didn't go through it, I wouldn't be who I am today. That's for a fact, even though I'm still healing, even though it is a daily occurrence where I wake up and I think, okay, well, here we go again. What can I do today that is going to better improve me, that is going to give the most out of my life and not go back to the, the negative thinking all the time, not go back to the depression, not go back to uh, people pleasing all the time because that is so easy to do. And it's kind of like if I don't have the strength and I don't create my good habits for healing every single day, then it's easy for me to go back to that because that's what trauma does is it, it never goes away. You just learn how to manage it better. And those healing practices that it's like creating good habits um, in your life every single day that you wake up. And um, I love how you, you mentioned the onions because it reminded <laughs> me of Shrek and how it was like uh, Donkey says, oh, you're wrapped up in layers, onion boy. You're afraid of your own feelings. It's kind of like, <laughs> like that very thing for a lot of men especially. And I know that to be true for me because I, I, even even today, like, Waking up, I was like, oh, now I've got to work on my feelings again. How am I feeling today? Am I feeling better? Am I feeling worse? How am I doing? So it's kind of like evaluating yourself every single day. And I think that for a lot of people that do experience trauma, they put up these, these masks and they go about their life just, you know, same old, mundane routines that don't really feel like opening up. And I know this to be true because that was me for a period of time. Mm -hmm. So for people that are wondering right now, okay, well, Dr. Sarah has spoken about healing from trauma and Jay sort of mentioned a little bit about it. So what are some things that we can do that are going to help a person that is like, because we're all at different levels, right? So from the person that is at the ground level, middle level, and the extreme level, how can we, can we break this down? Like how can we help each and every one of them? Or is it the same principles? We can, we can try to certainly. The first thing I would say is that in the book, I've, there are seven tools at the back and that was really important to me to write, um, write something that actually included a really practical application for people. So if you're interested, um, that, you know, that'll be coming up, it's out March 30th. And there are seven very practical, I've kept them as simple as I possibly can, you know, so that people can use them in their daily life and begin to explore this stuff. Um, but I, the honest truth is because trauma symptoms are so, so broad, everyone's approach to healing is, can be different. I mean, not everyone's, you know, but people's can be quite different. They can be quite unique. That's the first thing I would say. So there isn't a, right, okay, now you all have to go and do this, which actually on podcasts makes it a bit tricky because people say, how can you heal? And I go, well, it's a little complicated. Um, that, that's the truth. So it's really broad. Um, everyone's journey is different. It depends on what you're experiencing. So I tend to break down the symptoms into three main categories. So cognitive, so low self-belief, um, repetitive thinking, negative thinking, catastrophizing, all that kind of mind stuff. And then the body stuff. So the physical and emotional reactions that are going on. And then the behavioral stuff, which I think a lot of people kind of seem to come to at the end. But it's a really key piece of it is how are you coping with your feelings are you tending to use kind of avoidant coping mechanisms, as we said, or avoidant strategies? So I would say it's really going to depend, your approach is going to depend on which one is, is causing you the most problems, is, is, the, is taking up the most energy in your life. Some of you might say it's all three, in which case I would absolutely say, you know, if, you, if you're experiencing 
uh, symptoms in each three of those and they're, and they're at a high level and it's really causing you, you're feeling very stuck in them, then get help, you know, go find, find a great psychotherapist, a great clinical psychologist, um, whoever it might be, whoever feels good, whoever feels safe and comfortable, um, start that journey, get some help. Um, and for others who perhaps are experiencing symptoms in only one of those categories or at a much lower level, there's a ton of stuff we can do at home. You know, there really is. And it's all about awareness to start with. It's all about learning about trauma, learning, um, learning how it shows up in our lives and, and really educating it ourselves. And, and it's, it's, that is a key piece because suddenly we become clear, you know, suddenly we can see the patterns we're stuck in. Suddenly we can see when we're triggered. So, so one of the tools that I said uh, that I, is, is called joining the dots. Mm. Um, and I encourage people to kind of keep a, keep a diary for a week or a month where they write down everything that's triggered them. So today I was triggered by whatever it might be by a conversation with my mum, or today I was triggered by, um, uh, it can even be a smell, can't it? A smell or a, or a situation that I was in. So triggers are, are very unique again and, and very broad. And then what was, what was your reaction to that? Mm. And if we want to think about it, okay, what, what comes up, what does it remind you of from the past? Did any images from the past come up with that or, or afterwards? And, and after we've kept that journal for however long it might be a week or two weeks, suddenly we're able to see the patterns. Okay. I'm always triggered when I'm with that certain friend of mine. And then that the triggers are the doorway to healing. They're showing us what needs to be healed because what's happening when we're triggered, as I know, you know, is when we're triggered, we're reminded of a past trauma. Mm. So when, when we're triggered, so when we get that sudden, I'm I kind of presuming everyone knows what I mean, but I should probably explain. So triggered means that we're reminded of a past trauma and, and, and we're suddenly flooded. So our fight, flight, freeze response clicks in. We're flooded by all those hormones and we're going to experience either, either or all of those kind of cognitive, physical, emotional, uh, and maybe even behavioral reactions. So if you find that you're um, experiencing a very intense emotion or that your thinking is just completely spiraling, you're diving into fear um, uh, with after or within a, the same type of situation, you know, I'd be, I'd, I'd be using that. I'd be saying, well, you're triggered there. Something's reminded you of a past threat. And that's, that's the doorway that's showing you what you need to heal. That's showing you what it was from your past that has led to this reaction today. Um, but, but, but it, so, so it's a really big answer because it's a really big, broad topic. It depends what we're experiencing. It depends what we want to achieve. Um, yeah. So, so, but that, that's sort of top level. I think you you explain that with the limited time that we do have to ex- go into it. I think you, you did that perfectly. So appreciate you sharing that and I hope it helps someone that is listening right now. Uh, your new book, You're Not Broken, which I think is a beautiful title, uh, very true for every single person listening to this. Um, what was the most challenging part about writing the book? Oh, the most challenging part. Um, it's funny, as you said it, that my three kids popped into my head. So I suspect the honest answer is juggling uh, work life, which is always tricky, isn't it? Um, but in terms of writing the book, the part that I found the most difficult and I wrote and rewrote so many times was the chapter on relationships. So the middle three chapters, the first one is how trauma affects our relationships and then the next one is how trauma affects our health and well-being and then how trauma affects our work and career and kind of sense of purpose and health and well-being just flowed it, it was it was easier it was a joy to write as was the work and purpose section it just it just flowed 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 it wrote quickly and and fluently the relationship chapter because it you know how do you explain how trauma affects relationships it's such a complicated um complicated thing isn't it you know all of those dynamics the the different roles that were playing the different triggers the different reactions uh, the different types of relationships so explaining such a very intricate um area of human life in a chapter was really challenging but also now i read it by far the most satisfying 
Like I'm so proud of that chapter. I really am. I can't wait to get my hands on a copy of this book and actually start reading it. <laughs> Relationship factor to how we go through trauma and how it actually, because it doesn't just affect us. I think it, it also affects those around us, those closest to us. So for you and your personal experience, how did your trauma affect your close relationships? Oh my God. I feel like I could talk about that for three hours. So I'll try and I'll try and give you a summary. I mean, it's, it's just been a train wreck at times, you know, especially when I wasn't aware of what was going on. When I look back, you know, I had, um, uh, I had eating disorders from the age of, um, about 11, you know, so of course that trying to, for my friends and my family, trying to get close to and support someone that has that kind of coping mechanism that is pushing constantly, just pushing people away, um, unable to connect to themselves and their body in the moment. It's just really painful for everyone around me, you know, and when, and when I've been very triggered in, even in my adult life, you know, in the last kind of 10 years, or I was actually re-traumatized, um, a couple of years ago, uh, again, you, you kind of vanish, don't you? Mm. I think that that's certainly the way that I think, I think if my, if my partner was here, or my kids were here, that's what they would say is I go from being really present feet on the floor, laughing in my body to, to kind of vanishing pulling back and it's really painful for me and it's really painful for them. Mm. That's my personal experience, but I'm sure other people would say it's different. But for me, that's, that's, that's the, that's the sense is like, I'm here one minute and then boop, where's mom gone? Mm. And like once yeah. again, you, you zone out <laughs> of really life. Exactly. Like you're not present anymore. Yeah. You're off with the fairies, so to speak in your own little world. Well, you're thrown back. That's what the reaction does. That's exactly what the reaction does. We're triggered, so we're thrown back to the past. So instead of standing here um, as, you know, as my 38-year-old self, as my adult strong, you know, strong self today, I'm thrown back, you know, so I can't be present because I'm, I'm, I'm spiraling into the past. I'm, I'm stuck in an old reaction. So healing is all about reconnection. I reconnect to myself today, to my adult self, to the moment so that that's what the healing journey is for all of us, no matter. And in fact, maybe that would have been a better answer to your question before. At the top level, it's all about reconnection. So whether you're experiencing extreme symptoms or lower level symptoms, we're trying to reconnect to the moment, to our adult self, to our strongest self, to our authentic self, to our feelings, to our purpose. And, and that enables us to thrive and live our life instead of constantly, constantly being pulled back to the past. Mm. Purpose is such a big word that holds a great deal of meaning. And everyone seems yeah. to feel like, okay, if you've gone through trauma, if you've gone through depression, you know, I was talking about rejection before, if you've gone through all that, then suddenly you know you don't have a purpose anymore. And I love talking about how, I don't know if you experienced this growing up, but whenever you would come up to someone and someone would ask you, okay, what do you want to be when you grow up? Automatically we go, I want to be this. And then when that doesn't happen, mm. it's kind of like, okay, well, I don't have any sense of purpose or meaning in my life anymore. And then you mix that even further with trauma and it's just tenfolding, becoming even worse. And I know this for a fact because it happened with me. So I like to say to young people, and I think you might like this, but we got to, do the distinction between I am versus I do. Right now, mm. you are a person with a purpose. You were created and designed with a purpose. You, your character, your, your integrity, all your thoughts, everything about you right now is a purpose. Even your trauma, that was all. It's part of who you are. doesn't matter if it's bad or if it's good. It's still part of you. Own that. Respect yourself for it and value it. Now, what you do, that's secondary. That doesn't even matter, really, because you take who you are into what you do. And that you, you're not serving, um, yeah, you're not serving what you do. 
you're serving who you are and that is going to help like you feel 10 times better but it's having that once again having that mindset shift to okay i understand that i am worthy i'm not broken even though i have been through so much my relationships have suffered along the way but guess what that's all part of the human experience it's all part of life and as hard as it might be it is once again it's for your benefit not your detriment mm, it's so it's so tricky isn't it because I'm, I'm sure you know really what you're talking about there is post-traumatic growth yeah. you know i'm sure you've heard of that word you know and and i and i write i do write about that in the book this this wonderful because fifth Okay, so and this is a really important fact. So yes, 70 to 90 percent of us experience will experience or have experienced these big severe traumas, but 50 to 70 percent of us experience traumatic growth. Mm. Okay, so that is massive. It's a really important part of the conversation. Is what does that look like? What are these people doing? Well, A, it's obviously happening naturally within a lot of people there. They're managing to um, understand uh, the, these, the experiences that they have in a way that allows them to grow from them. And that has a lot to do with when you dig down into what the post-traumatic growth, uh, what it actually really looks like. It's a lot to do with opening up to others, you know, and, and, the, and the positive benefits of that. So the fact that then that allows us to express our emotions. So suddenly we're not kind of clamping down on everything. Um, it allows us to, to, to draw close to others and feel supported. It helps us feel seen and heard. You know, all that really important stuff helps us feel safe. It helps our bodies regulate. So if we want post-traumatic growth, and I know this is really hard because as I've said, trauma makes us push people away. It is that avoidant piece of it is really big, but having the the strength to to lean on the people around us to lean on the people that we trust and love and open up or even if that's with a therapist you know allowing people in is a really big piece of that and also um as you say using using the experience as that kind of um line in the sand moment where or what you know like the sliding door moment where okay this has happened it, it hurts like hell and, and I'm, and I'm reeling and, and however long you've been reeling for, but as you kind of gain insight around it and you realize that it's a traumatic reaction, it's having that moment where you, you decide what you want to change, you know? So, so, so making the life changes that you maybe wouldn't have if it hadn't have happened. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm here you know, I've, these things have happened. What do I want from my future? You know, it's that moment when it's almost that life perspective where we all go, okay, this really, really matters. And this that I've been looking at and obsessing about, that doesn't matter at all. And letting go of it and recreating or creating something beautiful for ourselves in terms of our life path. Um, it, it is very possible and it happens a lot. And I also am so aware that some people listening to this will be going, what are you talking about? I'm just so not there. And I get it. Like there's a moment for this and there's a moment not for this. You know, there's a moment where all we need to do is be present and feel like really feel and allow ourselves to grieve, you know, and allow ourselves to feel our feelings. So yes, we, we do do that. And when we're ready and when we've got that support, we also find that hope and that trust that allows us to rebuild, you know, rebuild and find that sense of purpose, which as you say, purpose isn't a doing, it's a being. Purpose is, purpose is it's about reconnection. Trauma, as I've said, it disconnects us. It disconnects us from our, from our core self, from our strength, from our all our, all, from that part of ourselves that's supposed to lead the way and make the decisions for us, it, that's what it disconnects us from. So as as we heal, as we break free, we we reconnect to that part of ourselves, and 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 feel our sense of purpose again. Mm. I think that is um, that is powerful. So for those people that pick up a copy of your book and they turn to any page at all or any chapter, which one 
would you recommend that they turn to first before actually starting in the book? Oh, what a great question. Um, okay. On, honestly, I may, maybe it's just because you've just spoken about it, but I would go, I would want them to see chapter, I'm going to have to, is it chapter seven? Is the, it's on growth and resilience. It's one of the later chapters. And I talk about this idea of just how possible it is to grow and thrive after hardship and trauma. And I talk about, you know, even, even sort of the famous names who have, who people are so shocked when they hear about the level of trauma that these, that these, that these people have experienced and, and look at them now, you know, healthy, happy, successful. And, and I think as a, as a place to start, because that's, that chapter is all about hope, you know, talk about resilience and how to be resilient and how and resilient and how to grow and what the growth mindset is. Um, so I would say that page, you know, the page on, on post-traumatic growth and what it looks like and just how very possible it is. Amazing. Honestly, I could speak to you forever. <laughs> about this. So, this is so cool. Um, but my, my final question for you, Dr. Sarah, this is my all time favorite question. It's a hypothetical one. I want you to imagine with me for a moment that you've been able to reach the age of 100. All your friends and your family have decided to put together a film for you of everything you've ever said and everything you've ever done. Don't ask me how in the world they got it all. We'll call it magic for sake of argument. <laughs> I, to, uh, I love it. It's great. To get it and show it to you on your hundredth birthday. What do you want that film to say and to show about your life? Oh, that's beautiful. You're going to make me cry. Beautiful question. It's lovely. Um, I, the, the two things that come to mind, or I think I would want people to be, or I hope that people will say that I was myself, that I was authentic, that I spoke my truth, because I think as I've, as I've, as I've grown and as I've healed, that's become really, really important to me is because before when I, when I wasn't well, and I can see I wasn't well, everything was about external validation you know, someone telling me or somehow, you know, whether it was through the material stuff or constantly looking for external validation, someone telling me I was worthy, someone telling me I was okay. And, and I've had a big shift away from that. Mm. You know, now uh, I've got, of course it can be triggered when I'm triggered. I can go back there to that place. But, but for me sort of it's just such an important part of me now is that allowing myself to be, to be myself to speak my truth, irrelevant of how it's received. You know, I'm not, not saying I'm being rude. I'm just saying, you know, speaking my truth, standing in my truth, owning it, stating my opinions without fear, stating my story without fear, um, being myself, you know, not, not putting on a show, not putting on a show anymore, no people pleasing. So I would love it if that was recognised and acknowledged. And then also the other word that came to mind was love. You know, I would, I would want, I feel very passionate about the fact that we're a, a, a big kind of, I feel like what's the point of life without, without it, you know, we have, we have to always reach for it, even though it's so painful, especially if we carry trauma, you know, especially if we want to avoid and run away and the relationships are uncomfortable and, ah, uh, but 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 the growth and the healing and the connection and the faith and the you know that the wonderment the joy the spontaneity is from is from love isn't it it's from those connections you know even if it's just a small moment where i'm really connected with my kids so i would hope that they would say you know she led with her heart she lived she lived in a in a in a loving way she was a loving mother she you know, she, she, she was a loving friend. She was a loving daughter. That's, that would be really important to me. It's a lovely question. I feel like that is a, a perfect answer to the question <laughs> and a great way to sort of wrap up our conversation today. Thank you so much, Dr. Sarah Woodhouse for everything, for going down this, this journey and for teaching people how they can heal themselves from trauma and make sure everyone that you're listening to go and get a copy of her book. You're not broken. 
and it'll be available literally after this goes live. So you can go grab a copy now. I believe you can pre-order it now as well, but just go <laughs> get a copy of it because <laughs> all of, every single one of us has experienced trauma. And I think this, even a little bit of this conversation, if it was valuable to you, the book will be 10 times more valuable to you. So go and, go and get a copy of it. I can't wait to get mine. But thank you so much, Dr. Sarah, for coming on the Storybox podcast today. Thank you so much, Joe. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been such a lovely, thought-provoking conversation.